the difference between correlation and causation because when you're looking at studies and experiments and things like that, uh, just because two things correlate does not mean that they cause each other to happen. So a correlation just means that something is changing and something else is changing at the same time. So an example um, is that there is a correlation between the number of people wearing shorts and the temperature outside. But just because a bunch of people are wearing shorts doesn't mean that the temperature is going to rise outside. It just means y'all can't wait to wear shorts. Okay, so that's what I was saying. People, more people wearing shorts does not cause the temperature to rise. Now, if we turn that around, we could make it a causation uh, relationship. The higher the temperature is outside, probably the more people are going to wear shorts, but it's not the other way. So there's a correlation, but there's not causation unless uh, we get the, the order correct. Okay? But causation means that something causes the other to happen. So that one's the easy one to remember. Um, but a correlation, you, hopefully you've heard that vocabulary word before, um, but you've talked about it with slopes and things like that. Okay, there's a correlation, either a positive or a negative correlation between two variables. Okay, so let's also talk about, uh, or let's look at those examples there on your paper. Uh, we talked about the one with shorts. Let's look at example two. It says, when John wears his lucky hat, he scores at least 120 points in bowling. Well, okay, that's probably, that's a correlation, but just because he's wearing a green hat doesn't actually truly affect his game. It doesn't make him actually bowl better. So there's a correlation there, but it's not causation. Uh, really quickly, look at, it's not labeled as an example, but it says, which of the following would probably be causation? Let's look at those four choices. Choice A, the people on the lower floor tend to walk more than those on the upper floor. B, males are more likely to walk than females. C, the younger a person is causes them to walk more. Or D, people who wear yellow are likely to walk more. Which of those four relationships do you think is a causation relationship? C. Okay, do we agree? Yes. Okay. A doesn't really make sense. You would think that if they live on the upper floor, they're probably walking more than the people on the lower floor. So if that happens, then that's probably just a correlation, <coughs> not a causation. Males walking more than females, same thing. It's probably a correlation, but just because your man doesn't like you, cause you to walk more than a female. But your age probably does have an effect on the amount that you walk. And then what color you wear, that really has no effect on walk. All right, sampling. Okay, let's talk about sampling. There are several different methods <coughs> that we have. Okay, so what this says here is when you are conducting a survey, an experiment, or an observational study, it's almost impossible to survey everyone in a population. Uh, it's very, very hard to ask every single student in the school a question, or it's very, very hard to ask um, every single person in America a question, so we actually would have to take just a sample to gather that information. And then we have to consider whether that is biased or unbiased, kind of like we were looking at yesterday, whether it was truly a random sample or not a random sample, uh, that has to be taken into consideration. So, random sampling uh, means that everybody in a population has an equal chance of being chosen in the experiment. Stratified sampling is a special uh, type that we need to look at. Uh, that's mentioned specifically in the standards, so you definitely need to make sure that you understand this one. The population is divided into categories. So, for example, males and females, or within the high school. We divide everybody 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And then we decide that, okay, we want to make sure that we have 50 9th graders, 50 10th graders, 50 11th graders, and 50 
uh, seniors, okay. just to make sure that every category is represented. So that's the purpose of a stratified sampling. Um, as opposed to a random sampling would just be saying, I want 200 kids in the school. Okay, a random sampling would say, I want 200 kids, make a list, number everybody off, and use a random number generator or four names out of the hat and pull out 200. We may not have an even distribution of 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. But if we do stratified sampling, we say, okay, we are choosing 50 ninth graders. We put all the ninth graders' names in a hat and pull out 50. Same thing in 10th graders, 11th, and 12th. Then each group is equally represented. So stratified um, is used a lot. There's something called systematic sampling. Um, so one example of that is to assign numbers to everybody and then choose every fifth person. So instead of just drawing numbers out of a hat, then we make a list and we go, you know, choose the second person and then every fifth person after that. So that's systematic. There's a system to it. Um, we also have cluster sampling. This is kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't come up a whole lot, but you randomly put the population into clusters. So like I would take everybody's name in this group and I would say, okay, uh, I would pull out, there are 24 of you, if I wanted to, to divide you into four groups, I'd pull out six names, y'all are a cluster. I'd pull out another six names, that's another cluster. I'd pull out another six names, that's another cluster. And then the final six names would be uh, the fourth cluster. And then I just spin a spinner and it lands on group B. So out of group B, I'm gonna take three of you to survey. All right, so that one's kind of complicated um, but it does come up every once in a while, okay? Uh, and then on your paper, the, the first one listed there, it's not here on the PowerPoint, but it's convenience, and it's selecting the sample by what's convenient. So standing in front of the cafeteria at lunch, and guess what, not everybody goes to the cafeteria at lunch, right? So that's just a convenient sampling. Or I'm wanting to interview math students, so I just interview you guys because it's convenient. Y'all are in my class. I don't worry about going to the other classes. So convenient sampling doesn't come up very much because typically there's bias there. Okay, so if we wanted to select, here's a scenario. If we wanted to select 10 animals from 25 dogs, 15 cats, and 10 rabbits, then random sampling, everybody in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. So we would just pick 10 uh, of those animals at random um, from all 50 other animals in the, in the population. Stratified, then we would say, okay, I want five of the dogs, I want three of the cats, and I want two of the rabbits, determining how many of each you want from each group. Systematic, then we would give every animal a random number and we would choose every fifth number, and that's how we would choose our 10 animals. And then for cluster sampling, then we'd mix them all up, we'd randomly put them into groups. They say in this example, two groups of 25, pick one of those two groups, and then take 10 of the animals from that group. So it's just another way of choosing your sample. Okay? Um, and then you've got another example very similar uh, on your paper there that you can look at later on. Okay, so let's just look at a couple of scenarios. These are not on your paper. The ones in your paper are different uh, scenarios that we'll look at here in a second. Let's look at the ones on the board. And the answer's already up there, but we'll still talk about it. We've got a Gallup poll that surveyed 1,018 adults by telephone in each of the six regions of the country, and 22% of them reported that they smoked cigarettes within the past week. So if we're trying to figure out what method they used, uh, then this would be stratified because it says that they surveyed that many adults in each of the six regions. So they split up. The United States in the six regions and picked that many people from each one. So they did, they wanted to make sure that not all of their 
uh, participants were from New York or from the South or from the West or whatever it may be. They wanted to make sure that they had a, a spread out sample across the United States. Let's look at another one. A principal goes to one classroom in each department and chooses two students from each class to participate in the school climate survey. Okay, this is also stratified because he made sure that, or she made sure that she went to each department uh, to choose, or each one classroom in each department. So she wanted to make sure that each classroom was represented, or each department was represented. Excuse me. Okay, uh, Winston Salem's Five County School sends out a survey to parents by generating a list of student numbers from Power Schools. Well, that would be random because they just listed out all the student numbers. Um, every student had an equal chance of being chosen here. It's not stratified. They didn't say, well, let's make sure we have this many from this high school, this many from that high school. Let's make sure we have this many freshmen, this many sophomores. Uh, bless you. Uh, it wasn't systematic, it wasn't clustered, we didn't group them together or anything, so it was completely random. Alright, so let's take a second.